What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in this video, we're gonna check out some of the top features contained inside of the extension profile builder for SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Profile Builder is a tool I've talked about a bunch before, but it's basically a tool designed to help you create profiles and smart assemblies inside of SketchUp. So what this means is this means this uh, basically allows you to create things like walls with framing that automatically fills in or railings that automatically add panels. So basically it's the automation of complex objects in SketchUp. It's super powerful. And I thought that I would talk about some of the top features contained inside a profile builder. Note that as of right now, for a couple more days, you can use this code, BlackCyber23, to get 40% off all products from Mindsight Studios, including Profile Builder. Um, and you can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash profile builder. Note that is an affiliate link, meaning if you did purchase through that link, I would receive a commission. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so when I'm talking about this extension, I really break the functionality up into profiles and assemblies. And we'll talk about some of the top features for both. Okay, so first off, Profiles gives you the ability to draw two-dimensional profiles for use in SketchUp. All right, so the way Profile Builder works is it allows you to take either a pre-created profile or a profile that you create directly inside of SketchUp and basically apply it along a path. So let's say for example that I took a handrail profile. So something like this right here. So Profile Builder allows you to draw a profile along a path like this, but then it also gives you the ability to select multiple parts of a path and create that object along the path like this. So notice what that does is that gives you the ability to bring this in and place this along not only a multi-segment path like this, but also along curved paths. So if I was to use the build along path function, notice what this is going to do is this is going to extrude this along this path like this. Now, one of the cool things about this is if you do this, you can actually adjust these profiles. So for example, notice how if I toggle into x-ray mode, this place this profile in here along this object, but it inserted it based on the center of this profile. Well, I don't necessarily want that, but instead of having to redraw this, I can change the insertion point of an object in Profile Builder, and I can, I can actually go back and I can edit that and adjust it. So I can tell this to adjust all of these properties and click on edit, and notice how it's going to move this profile up like this. So you can adjust these profiles after the fact um, without removing things from your model, which is extremely powerful. Now, another thing about Profile Builder that makes it super powerful is it allows you to not only select singular paths like this, it can also do multiple selections that aren't touching, which is something if you're trying to do this with the follow me tool, just would not work in any way. So let's say for example, that we were to try to bring in a curb. So I'm gonna go to my curbs function right here. And let's say that we wanted one of these curb and gutter profiles. So I'm going to bring this one in right here. And what I'm going to do is first off, I'm going to set the insertion point to the corner right here. So we'll go with bottom left, but then I'm just going to click on build along path. And notice what this did is this inserted these curbs everywhere that I had an edge selected right here. So I was able to basically insert curb on my surface without having to come in here and redraw this over and over again. Now, one thing that you're gonna note about this is these came in backwards, right? They're facing the wrong direction. Well, the cool thing about this is if I select these profiles and then I click on the option for select properties and I tell this to mirror the object and I click on edit, notice how those are all going to flip and be oriented the correct direction. So making those changes and adjustments to your existing profiles is really easy. And so let's say we wanted a different kind of curb and gutter in here. What I would do is I would click in here and let's say maybe we wanted this curb and gutter profile right here. So now I have that selected, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make sure that I have this set to the proper insertion point. But then if I click on the button right here to edit profiles and edit this, notice how it actually swapped out the profile 
in SketchUp. So you can use this to swap out objects in place in your SketchUp models with little or no effort, which is really cool. And so another cool thing about this is how easy it is to save libraries of different profiles so you can come back to them later. So for example, let's say that I was to bring in one of these collections of two-dimensional profiles from the 3D warehouse. So we'll do this molding base number five from jpalm32, but I'm just gonna download this into SketchUp like this. I'm going to click and I'm going to explode it. And then I'm going to explode all of these to their individual geometry. But now all I have to do is select a profile and within the profile dialog, I can click on the plus button right here. And I'm not sure what the naming um, conventions are of these. I think they're like CW somethings, but I'm gonna do a CW 1000. Well, notice what that does is I have this space selected and it picks it up as a profile. And th so one thing when you're doing this is it's usually a good idea to just like create a copy of the profile really quick so you can see what it's going to do. But for this particular profile, I just want to set this up where it's rotated like negative 90 degrees. And then we can just update this to make sure that it does it properly. But now you've got this profile that's set up and ready to go. Well, what you can do is you can save that to your library like this, but then when you go into that library, that's actually gonna show up in your list. So I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom because that's a C base down here, but I can bring this in now to any model like this and use it to quickly add base. So you can save your own profile libraries and keep them on your computer for use later. And so another thing that's cool with Profile Builder is say that you created a grid kind of like this one and you wanted to create steel with these steel members. Well, one of the things you're gonna notice is when I have edges that intersect like this, this is actually going to overlap a little bit. Well, depending on what you're trying to do, that could create a problem or it might not, right? But say that you wanted to clean this up, there's a tool in here called the Trim to Solid tool. And what it does is it allows you to select an object. So in this case, this end panel right here, and you can tell this to trim these so that it's gonna trim against the other object so that you don't have that overlap going on. So I can just come in here and I can just clean this up really easily using the trim to solid tool. So that tool is in here specifically to give you the ability to um, not have overlapping geometry like this. And so what I really love about this tool is it gives you the ability to make those live changes. So say for example, I wanted to make an adjustment to this steel member shape, right? So I could swap this out for another profile, but I've already got a profile in here that I like. Well, if I double click on this and then click on the option for edit the profile of the active profile member, right? So if I click in here and let's do something, maybe not ridiculous, but maybe something where we can at least see that we've made changes. Whoops. So let's say that I was to move this out. Let's say I adjusted this profile so that this is now two inches wide. Well, now if I click out of here, it's gonna ask me if I wanna update this for all members in the model with the same profile name. I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. That's gonna adjust all of my steel, but notice how that's going to adjust all of those profiles with your new profile layout right here. And it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see it when I kind of rotate down. But notice how you can adjust profiles in place without having to redraw them or rerun them along the paths. All right, so those are the individual profiles, but where Profile Builder can really get powerful is it also has the ability to create these smart assemblies. And so assemblies can be found under the second button right here. And so what these are is these are basically smart assemblies that add in things like your panes of glass or your intermediate supports for your fences in a smart way. So they work in a very similar way. And I've already got a couple of these in my model, so I'm just going to sample them um, in order to get them set up. But notice how I can just click in here and this is going to create those objects along a path. And notice how it's automatically splitting up like the glass panes in here really quickly like this so that I don't have to do it manually. So this is a super fast way to add like a rail, but this has the same functionality in it that the profiles do in the sense that you can select a path and create an object along a path really quickly like this. And then you can also extrude these along curves. So if I select this right here, I'm gonna go ahead and sample this rail then with this selected, I can do the same thing. 
right? I can generate that rail along the path. And notice how it's automatically splitting this up into these different panels, just like this. So super powerful way to create objects like this. One of the things that I like about this is you can download some additional assemblies by going to the 3D warehouse and then they're really easy to use. So like for example, this glass panel railing is something that Mindsight Studios has put on here. But if I download this into my model, then all I have to do is sample it with the assembly tool. And now I have it in here ready to use. So you can bring in a base assembly like this into your model and then just sample it. You can also save your assemblies. So like for example, if I created a folder for railings and I save this glass rail in here, then I can come back and reference that in the future by just going to my railings folder right here. So you can save assemblies in Profile Builder to your library in the same way that you can profiles. You can also build your own custom assemblies by combining profiles and components. So for example, let's say that we wanted to create a picket fence. Well, what we need to do is we need to give it the member that's being extruded along the path, as well as the component that's being repeated. So in this case, I would add a component, which I'm gonna pick from the model, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place a version of this right here, just so we can see it. But you can set things like the spacing, so how often that's going to be repeated, right? So if I set this to four feet, and then I update this, Notice how that's now gonna be repeated every four feet. Well, then I can tell this what profile member I want repeated along here. So in this case, we're gonna add a profile member. We have this two by six selected. So I'm just gonna go over into my profile dialog, add this as a profile, so I'll just call it two by six. And I'm just going to adjust the insertion point to probably center right. And I'm gonna click on okay. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna update this so that you can see it. And actually I probably want that to be center left. So I'm gonna move this over here. And the cool thing about this is the way that this updates, you can actually see the way that it's being placed in your model. So I can see that when I update this, that's going to be on the ground right here. Well, I can adjust things like the height above ground and the end setback. So in this case, I want this to be up maybe like 18 inches right here. And I want it to have an end setback so it extrudes all the way along the side here. But again, I can just update this in order to see what I've done. So I've got this all kind of set up. Well, now I'm gonna add another profile here. I'm gonna say I want this one to be 24 inches above ground. I'm gonna go back to this one and adjust it so that it's 12 inches. But then I'm gonna add one more. I'm gonna say I want this one to be 36 inches above ground like this. And notice how I can update this in order to see the changes. And so now I can use this to create my own fence that turns corners or does whatever I want it to do like this. So super powerful way to create these smart assemblies. And then you could save this for use later as well. And so let's say that you drew an object along a path and you want to change the path. Well, there's a tool in here for making adjustments to that path. So what you do is you double click on the profile member and then you click on this option. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to put you into an edit mode where you can make changes to the path like this. And then when you click back out, Notice how this is going to have adjusted to follow along that path. You can use that function both for profiles as well as assemblies inside a profile builder. All right, and so say you had a multi-layer wall like this one, that's got like foundation, but then it's also got another profile on it that's generating like this waterproofing layer right here. Well, if I click on this and I run my hole tool, that's a tool that's built into profile builder, I can use this to add holes in my wall. So. Notice how I can just click in here and it's going to cut a hole in the wall like this. So you can use this to quickly create openings in your, uh, in your profiles just like this. So if you need to do that, you definitely can. One thing that this is lacking right now is if this is like a framed wall, it doesn't really have the ability to add like framing back in, right? So if you had a bunch of studs in here and you cut a hole, they just kind of stop right here. So I can think of a few ways that I would fix that with the components that go in the wall that make up the doors, but just be aware that as of right now, this is truly a hole cutting tool rather than a tool that's also going to like smartly add in additional framing members or anything like that. All right. So finally, 
we've got a tool in here that is probably my favorite tool in Profile Builder, even more than like the actual Profile Builder functionality. It's called the Smart Path Selection Tool. And what it is, is it's a tool designed to help you do quick, complex selections in SketchUp. So say I've got this hole right here. Well, if I was to try to select along the perimeter of this hole manually, it would take me forever. But what I can do instead is I can use this tool and notice how it's trying to find the fastest selection path to wherever my mouse is like this. So I can use this in order to really quickly select like groups of groups of edges or other things like that um, in order to be able to select them in SketchUp. So massive fan of the Smart Path selection tool as well. All right, so that's some of the top features inside a profile builder. I love the way this allows you to manage your different profiles and adjust them without actually like moving them around in your model. Um, I found it to be very helpful in the past. If you do want to check it out, I'll link to it on this page. Remember that is on sale for a couple more days as a part of their Black Friday sale. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.